Many of you have seen Bandsaw Magic, a short that we posted. I take a block of wood, make a few bandsaw cuts, utter those magic words, instrumentum, benditionis, potentia. And suddenly, that block of wood becomes very interesting. And not a few of you have commented, well, that's a great trick, Nick, but what's it good for? Well, that's what we are about to explore. I'm going to make a lamp, a hideous table with four magical legs, and a dazzling set of display shelves that look to be dissolving right before your very eyes. Pretty cool, huh? You can find the plans for many of these projects in our store. Just either click on the card or look for the link in the description. And if you'd like to skip ahead to any of these projects, use the time codes in the description. Let's review the basic bandsaw magic technique. You start with a piece of square stock. Using your bandsaw, cut a curve, any curve, through the length of the stock. Normally the cut starts at the top and exits the bottom. Put the pieces back together so the stock is square again. If you want, you can tape the pieces back together to keep them from shifting during the next step. Turn the stock 90 degrees so that another side faces up. Then cut a curve, any curve. Now comes the part where the magic happens. We're going to keep the stock square, and I'm going to number the corners. One, two, three, four. Now we're going to turn each piece 180 degrees so that the numbers meet in the middle. Your square stock has now been transformed into a uniquely curved shape. I have newt, toe of frog, and a healthy dash of non-Euclidean geometry. Now let's see what we can do with this. Well, the first thing that comes to a woodworking wizard's mind is that this would make an absolutely great lamp base, Lumus Maxima and all that. But in order to do that, I need a very long drill bit to drill a hole down through the center for the threaded lamp pipe. This is the stuff that channels the wires. Or I could make that hole before I even start. Using a table saw or a router with a chamfering bit, chamfer the corners of the stock. If you're wondering how big to make the chamfer, take the diameter of the lamp pipe times 0.707. After chamfering the outside corners, band saw the shapes. Make the first cut and then the second. And when you rotate the pieces and bring the corners together, they will form a square cavity that will accommodate the lamp pipe. The next challenge is to glue these oddly shaped pieces together. Divide your assembly into two halves, each with two pieces. Working on a flat surface, such as this assembly table, glue and clamp the parts together, assembling each half separately. Here's a tip. Rub two pieces of 50 grit sandpaper together over the glue after you spread it. When you press the pieces together, the grit will bite into the wood and prevent the pieces from shifting. When the glue cures, clean up the halves, making sure their backs are perfectly clean and flat. Then glue and clamp the halves together. Once you've assembled and sanded the shape, glue it to a base, add the lamp pipe and all the other lamp parts, plug it in and luminous. One of the things you need to consider when performing this magic is wood grain pattern. Remember, when all is said and done, you're going to have a seam on each side of the leg. In woods with a strong grain pattern, such as this particular piece of pine, these seams will stand out like they do right here. But with woods where the grain pattern is much more subtle, the seams will be less noticeable. But wood grain has an irregular pattern. When I glued up this lamp, it had a regular pattern of vertical stripes of veneer, end grain and long grain. And when I cut the shape, and put the curved parts back together, those stripes remained continuous. So, to further this experiment, Travis and I have glued up 
three more pieces of stock for lamp bases. This is made from plywood, but I've cut the stock so that the veneer stripes run through it at a 30 degree angle. This is made from pieces of walnut and maple. The pieces are arranged so that two of the sides are checkered while the other two sides are striped. This is also made from walnut and maple, but here we've arranged the checkers and the stripes in an ascending pattern. So we have three different patterns and all the patterns are absolutely regular. I'm going to take each of these, cut this S shape and see what we get. And here are the results. Now I'm just holding these together with rubber bands for the time being. As you can see, this is our plywood stock and where the bands of veneers were horizontal, those can be made to line up pretty well. But where they were angled through the stock, well, those aren't lining up at all. On our checkers and bars, we do have the checkers and the bars lining up on all sides. But uh, here, I learned the importance of bandsaw alignment. You see, when I started the cut, my blade was about a half a degree out of square with the table, and I got some stuff like this. Now, I'll be able to fix this with some judicial sanding, but <clears throat> it sure helps to uh, check your alignment before you start. Now, here we have the ascending pattern of checkers and bars, and as you can see here, that pattern has almost completely disappeared on all sides. It's just sort of a hodgepodge. Well, <clears throat> like all experiments, some of this worked and some of it didn't. But one thing's for sure, we sure know a whole lot more about this now than before we started. But lamp bases aren't the only use for this bandsaw magic. You can also use it to create some very interesting, even astounding legs for tables, chests, and shelves. In fact, this technique makes extremely good legs as long as you begin the cut at the top and end at the bottom. That way the grain is continuous throughout the length of the leg. If you begin or exit the cut on the sides, the technique will still work, but the grain won't be continuous through all four pieces, and this will weaken the leg. I've got an ordinary tabletop here with an apron, and I'm going to cut four different legs, one for each corner. Let's start with that S shape that I used for the lamp base. After making the two bandsaw cuts, you need to decide which way the leg will face. I think it will look best if the leg curves out at the top and back in at the bottom. The leg is made up of four pieces. Pick the inside piece and cut it short. The apron on the small table that I showed you is two inches tall so I'm shortening this piece by two inches. When I assemble the leg, it will have a two inch notch on the inside corner. This will allow me to attach the leg by simply gluing the apron in the notch. We'll need three more legs, but just for kicks, let's do a different shape for each corner. Now we already have an S shape. That's what craftsmen call a Sima curve, C-Y-M-A. And that may remind you of a classic cabriole leg, since cabriole legs are cut to a Sima curve. But to turn it into a leg, you'll have to make a rectangular post at the top. So instead of making the cut in one pass, you'll have to do it in two. One for the post, beginning at the top, and the second for the Sima curve, beginning at the bottom. By the way, this isn't a true cabriole. Cabriole legs are always tapered from the knee to the ankle and you can't make a taper with this technique. If you start with a two inch square block, your shape will always be two inches square horizontally all along its length. On the next leg, I'm going to make a simple arch from the top to the bottom. This results in a gently curved leg. And depending on which of the four pieces I choose to make the inside corner, I can make the leg curve in, curve out, curve right, or curve left. This particular leg is going to curve in. For this next leg, I'm going to make a series of waves. The waves start small at the top and they grow towards the bottom. 
At the same time, the wave starts out fairly long and shortens with each new wave. In technical terms, the amplitude increases while the wavelength decreases. This results in a leg that looks as if it's melting or collapsing from the bottom up. But I want you to look very closely. These cuts produce some very thin, very sharp corners. That makes them very frail. And as you can see, they are already chipping. So even though you can cut any shape that you want to, not all shapes are appropriate depending on the size of the piece and its application. And there you have it. The world's ugliest table. The word uh, monstrous comes to mind. But this experiment does show us what legs we might choose for a serious project and what legs we ought to burn just so no one knows what kind of monster we created. Let's make something useful that we can all stand to look at. What do you think? But for this project, I'm going to take this bandsaw magic technique and push it one step farther. Instead of making a single notch at the top of the leg, I'm going to make several notches all along the length. For the shape of the leg, I'm going to try that melty wave thing that I did for the table. I know my first go around with this design was just absolutely hideous, but sometimes just a small change can turn a disaster into a triumph. The table leg looks terrible because there are too many waves in such a short space. I'm going to keep the same number of waves, but I'm going to make the leg more than twice the length. And there we go. Yeah, the waves are still there but they are much better to find and the sharp edges are gone. I do believe that this is going to make a really attractive leg. Okay, let's choose a piece for the inside corner. That'll do. This time, instead of cutting the inside piece short to make a single notch at the top of the leg, I'm going to cut the part into several pieces. Let's toss the pieces where we want the notches and glue the remaining pieces back together to assemble the leg. Note that I'm using spacers to hold the position of the discarded pieces. These spacers are waxed so the glue won't stick to them. All the parts have been glued up and we have removed the spacers and the result is a leg that has several notches all along its length. Make three more legs just like them then cut several boards to fit the notches, fit the notches to the boards, and ah, abracadabra. You have a striking set of display shelves that look like they're melting into your workbench, if that doesn't blow your dress up. You can get the plans for this melting display shelves at our store, and I've included full-size templates for the legs and there are templates for the lamp base and the cabriol leg, just for giggles. Just one more thing. Some of you kind folks have asked me if this is only bandsaw magic, or can you also do it on a scroll saw? Well, the scroll saw is just as magically inclined, provided you reduce your expectations somewhat. Cut in exactly the same way you would do on the bandsaw. Measure once, cut twice. And here's a tip for cutting extremely small parts. Use double-sided carpet tape to stick the part to a larger scrap of thin plywood. This will help you maneuver the parts without bringing your fingers close to the blade. And there you have it, one teeny tiny lamp base. And if you're good with hand tools, you can also do this magic with a fret saw or a coping saw. The truth is, the magic depends on the wizard, not on the wand.